Give me a good intro. Yeah. Uh, we got the guy from that does the pumpkin stuff. Okay. <laughs> On YouTube, he does uh, Rust. His name's Wellen. He's one of the few people that has as many views per video as subscribers. That's a rare feat, right? That's good, right? That's, that's not a mean thing to say. No, that's, 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 that's factual. Yeah, that's factual stuff. And, uh, I feel like that's a harder and harder feat. You, know? you, you, don't, see, you don't see PewDiePie pulling uh, no. 100, mil, 100 million uh, on, a, on a vid, you know? You know what you do see him doing, though? What? Pulling the no, N-word. No, no, no. Really? Let me just... Ah, yeah, boy! Like, what's your address? Uh, one, two, three, go heck yourself, Lane. The only thing keeping you alive right now, <laughs> keeping me from jumping on you like a bonobos monkey on your face, is is the fact that you're looking at me through a webcam. Like, oh, is... so there's no baby involved. No, they're like, this is how you do it. God. That's... You want to watch something together? <laughs> no. No? Okay. No. <laughs> Speaking of big penises, though, the message at hand is this jester is bland with a forehead like the elephant man. Poof. Just silence. <laughs> no? <laughs> yeah. He's not even gonna. <laughs> Crank it. So I did, uh, we frantically wrote down stuff about you at the last mm. second because uh, we're mm. professional. You know, we're professional mm -hmm. interview yeah. guys. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, hold on a second. I got so many booked here, it's hard to find all this. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, we were going to talk, we were playing Tarkov, and I started to talk about this, and I was like, I'm going to cut them off right fucking here, because I, uh, that's skipping content, potential content for the podcast. I didn't want to content. I didn't want to get to know you too well. So I saw on Twitter, you went to the Black Lives Matter protest in Washington. I did indeed. Yeah. Is that DC or what? Like Seattle? Washington, DC. Oh, that's the important I heard one. Seattle's, uh, I heard Seattle's got, like, uh, kind of new ownership now or something. I, I, all I've read are headlines. I've not delved into the topic. Yeah. So I, I, I'm not really too informed on it. Did you go because of your love of anarchism, or did you go because... You I, wanted were... the new, I wanted the new Jordans. No, I'm kidding. But, um, no, I mean, it, serious answer, though. I mean, there's obviously immense systemic racism present, you know, in, yeah. in the United States, and globally as well so wanted you to that, you wanted see to that fucking support. old guy get pushed on his ass and like his head popped when he hit the ground yep that, yep that was that was uh that was a disturbing little clip right there but apparently those guys got arrested though the cops did. but it's like but the fact that it's like oh there's a whole contingent of them and they were like this is okay but, you know that's kind of the worst yeah part. the national guard they were the ones to stop and actually like um, God, I, I feel like I'm embraced between your big guns when you adjusted your camera. Really? Yeah. Just... Ah, yeah, boy! <laughs> no, like, I've seen people, like, uh, remark that it's okay to laugh at that old white guy falling because uh, he's white. <laughs> and so, 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 so you can't be pinned a racist for it? No, well, I mean, like, I'm sure there's one black person that might have laughed at the other guy, but I wouldn't do it. Oh, oh. That was a voice crack. That was yeah, a good it was. One. Yeah, that was a cool. <laughs> Dude, my voice has been going insane lately. I think I might be going through puberty finally. You know? If if you had puberty too. Oh, so, so you never had it in the first place. Never had it. No. Ah. As you can tell. Yeah. Uh, I've I've done a good job of masking up my immature mind. But mm -hmm. um I think it's Well finally... it'd be physical too. Yeah. <laughs> it's fi it's finally time to come clean. I'm actually a teenager mentally. But uh, you, you've got <laughs> you've got the sort of Benjamin Button. Yeah, <laughs> you, you got a mild case of the Benjamin Button. <laughs> Did you? Uh, uh, oh wait, hold on. I have stuff written here that I'm not even gonna fucking look at. Okay, anyways, <laughs> I was gonna read it. And I was like, ah, eh, don't worry about it. Um, yeah. So that Black Lives Matter protest thing. Were you there for like the whole thing? Did you loot anything? No, no. no this one so I went seen to by the, cops. I went to the exact spot where Trump held his the, the little photo op with his Bible upside down. Did you yeah. see that? I went I, to that exact spot. I, that's actually where the, the I got a picture taken right there. I was oh, yeah? just like, bruh. Um, but yeah, it was wild. There was uh, there were like people marching all over the place, and um, people uh, they they I don't know if you saw it. They renamed um, can't remember name can't remember the actual name of the street, but they made it Black Lives Matter Boulevard. Yeah. Uh, right by the White House. And really so, like, rolls it off says, the tongue. 
the name yeah. of that street. Actually, yeah. I don't. I think it's Plaza, but I feel like they missed a major alliteration opportunity uh, with with the with not calling it a boulevard. Yeah, but. Um, yeah, so it's in huge letters across the street. Like, if you're just standing on it, you can see. And, yeah, I mean, people were obviously pissed, and everyone was marching, and, um, there were people playing music. At one point, we were in, we were kind of marching down the street in a big group, like, huge group, just kind of all massing down the street. And then there's, like, a drum circle or something, and people, uh, I don't know, dancing and making music and stuff off to the side. And then a lot of people in the, in the crowd, in the in the march started chanting stop the music stop the music and i guess some people then went over there to tell them to stop the music but the people playing the music didn't want to stop the music because they were like expressing themselves so there's kind of like a maybe like a five minute sort of awkward standoff where it was uh were stop, they uh stop, stop yeah were they hippies everyone no, no, every it was like it was like everyone was the people playing the music were black and most of the people in the march were black. Yeah. So it was kind of like it was like they were like no, we're expressing ourselves here and they're like no, you should express yourselves here. So it was a little bit interesting kind of like oh, should the music stop? So cuz I think it was drowning out the chance was the concern. Mm, the chance. That's really yeah. honestly like if, if you're a lawmaker that's your worst nightmare is a good unified chant, you know. Mm. De- you know that they, they had defund the police that was a uh, that that's easy one? that's easy yeah. you know that, Honestly, and, and that rolls off wait. the tongue as well i can't wait until we have to call 911 and then pay for the police to come to your house that's what i can't wait for mm. or maybe like have a constant hired police force at at a at the fingertips call away that's what i want you know <laughs> constant militarization yeah your neighbors piss you off you slip some on the ground hire, and they go yeah. beat them up you hire your own police force <laughs> i don't want these uh these socialist police forces that are paid by taxes that's fucking yeah, commie maybe nonsense yeah yeah that, that's pretty cool maybe it'll we like can fall out in new vegas we can like bring back like... the pinkertons like red dead you know <laughs> yeah. hire a bunch of goons to watch my stagecoach as i go down the road Ah, she, my stage coach. <laughs> no, so what What do you feel like since you've been at the protest? You're obviously more political than I am. I'm a hermit. I don't fucking know, right? Um, I just, uh, um, I try to vote for the candidate that lets me go to Chick-fil-A and get food every day. That's the guy I vote for every time. Even Sunday? <laughs> even, yeah, even on Sunday. Dude, if there's a politician out there that says we're going to make these fuckers stay open on the Lord's Day, I'll mm-hmm. vote for him. Every time I'll vote for him. I mean, that that's a compelling case. That is. <laughs> a compelling platform. Yeah. And if there was a way that they could make it so that they could get triple lane drive throughs because we have the double-decker drive throughs right now, but I want the— uh, Like one on top of the other? No, no, no. They're, like, wide. Like, you split mm-hmm. up. As you pull in the parking lot, you have to branch out into it like you're about to do NASCAR around the building. And <laughs> Is there a better lane? Uh, usually the one closer to the building. Mm-hmm. But then if you, like, I'm always scared I'm going to run out of gas or something. And so I don't want to be stuck with no gas and be, like, next to the building with a car outside, you know? I don't yeah. know. I don't no, know if, if you've you ever had of... that problem. <laughs> nope, I, I haven't. No. Where do you I, live again? I wouldn't want to run out of gas. Where do you live in again? Especially in a drive through uh, I live sort of by D.C. in, like, that area. Oh, okay. Kind of in the... Like, what's out, your address? Uh, one, two, three, go heck yourself, Lane. <laughs> so the um wait so you, have you always lived in dc uh well, not always i traveled around a lot as a kid i lived in new york lived in switzerland for a while switzerland lived, what the fuck yeah well with part of my dad's job he worked with the uh, diplomatic stuff so uh. i spent uh did you have there. immunity actually yes my, my parents did? literally did i didn't because i mean well it, i i wasn't really old enough to fully appreciate it because i was young Mm-hmm. But they would, uh, they'd just like go off to France and like get cheese and stuff, come back, and they'd just be like, uh, the Swiss people would just, ah, yes, come through. <laughs> huh. So, yeah. yeah. Wait, so like, how, like, you always see movies and stuff when people have diplomatic immunity. It's always like the, the diplomat's son, like, stabs some guy and then he has the immunity. Like, does it go that far, or is it just like, yeah, you can bring grapes into my country? I didn't really test the limits of it too much. You didn't I was stab like a guy? Seven. <laughs> I, I didn't really understand the opportunity that, that had fallen into my lap yeah. due to my young age. So 
um, if I was, if I had it now, I'd, it would be a case study. I'd, I'd do that for you. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But right. did, well, you, you heard about that. Um, I think it was maybe a year ago or something when the, what was it? I think it was in the UK, some, some diplomat from somewhere in the, like some other country to the UK, like ran, was driving on the wrong side of the road. It was a diplomat's wife or something. And she hit and killed some guy. And then she just like ditched back to Ecuador or something. Oh, and got away with it? <clears throat> I don't know what happened. But oh. that it was definitely a point of contention, I believe, in the diplomatic community. Interesting. In the diplomatic community. Do they all hang mm-hmm. out, all the diplomats? Like Uh, I'm not sure. I'd imagine so. I mean they're probably all like have very a, culture. a you win uh, fondue party where they all hang out and talk about their different oui, cultures. Oui. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, so uh, I got a question for you. Since you're like your channel's eight times the size of mine now, um, mm-hmm. is it a point of pride surpassing all these people you used to look up to, and now you can just stomp on them <laughs> like ants? You know. I mean, I mean, wh- uh, wh- what was it? Was I, I? I wrote a random like rap bar about this once, but I can't remember. It was like you you view as rivals the guys you used to idolize. Yeah. So, so I I don't know. That's kind of and 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 I'm you, you enjoy somewhat tongue in cheek looking at the kind of like looking at YouTube as a cutthroat business, you know, a zero sum game. Like, yeah, you know, if you're not if you're not watching me, then you're watching somebody else. So I gotta crush them. Uh-huh. And uh, I I don't think that's the healthiest mindset. No, that that's but... the way you do it, man. The only thing keeping you alive <laughs> right now, keeping you from keeping me from jumping on you like a bonobos monkey on your face is is the fact that you're looking at me through a webcam if we were in the same room it would be game over <laughs> you, I was, you got that diplomatic immunity card <laughs> and the knife ready i was i was looking at, like at pax when we met each other i was like all i gotta do is just catch him at the top of a staircase and it's all over <laughs> and then i can corner his market you know <laughs> <laughs> I'll I'll whip out the thesaurus and start making rust videos. It'll be game over. There's a pumpkin patch down the road. I could take this guy over in no time. <laughs> Easy. No, but uh, I I think it's also important to remain humble and be like you know um, things you know tastes come and go, but you just want to work hard and kind of focus on enjoying and having a good time and trying to improve yourself. And that oh, yeah. way you won't be. And I think it's easy, you know, because. This is one business where it's like the metrics literally define. Well, if you look at it, it's very easy to believe that the metrics define your success because it's like it's they're so visible. It's like, oh, how many views did you get? How many subscribers yeah. do you have? How many? But uh, and it's easy to be dominated uh, by just watching those go up. But I think it's also important to remember that sometimes you need to do things that, you know, won't do as well or you just want to try new things or um, just to expand and, and be like, okay, no, I want to do this and, and prove something to myself or do this. And, uh, just so I can try something new, see if I can do it. Because also if you're like, this is what works for me, I'm going to do this forever. You, that forever does not exist. You got like, you got like six months, eight months, maybe or something on that bad boy before everyone else is doing it. And then you're like, all right, time to keep innovating. And then you, then you turn into Sir Winter, you know? Just doing <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> uh, welcome to Solo Survival's number fucking eight hundred and forty-seven. You know, like, yeah, dude, come on. Be- well, Be- it's this. It's it's similar in battle rap. There's people who um, started it and they're like OGs and they like defined the 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 groundwork for what people do nowadays. And that is a hundred percent so much. Like I remember I watched his caveman video. Um, where he did, he was with Vertigo, I think, and they're like, mm-hmm. and they just yell at each other, and they they like r- run up to random clans and stuff, doing that in Rush, and um, yeah, so uh, that, that that was just cool how they how they kind of like laid all this groundwork for stuff people are doing now. The uh, uh, okay, so how about this? Innovators, you've you've come up now. I think you shake hands more than I do, right? Like move around, talk to all these different YouTubers and stuff. And uh, okay. you seem like a pretty positive guy, right? Mm-hmm. And me, uh, the polar opposite. Every yin has its yang, you know? <laughs> uh-huh. uh, um, who would you say you've gotten along with YouTuber-wise the most? 
Because you seem like kind of a solo guy, right? You don't you don't sit there and hang out with other YouTubers all day, do you? No, not really. Um, one person I'd I'd say that I I didn't know that I was gonna get along with so well is Swagger Souls. Yeah. Like that that dude that dude is super cool, super legit, like super super humble, super real. Um, and and you know it's like that that that's like a, a giga YouTuber personality, and I think it's very easy to get an ego at that point. Yeah. And uh, and no, he's just like super chill, so. That's somebody that I didn't, I didn't know or didn't know, but but we're definitely good buds now. So that's that's really cool when you kind I of like. I saw you on that Misfits podcast, man. You, those guys are. Uh, how cool are those guys? Besides Swagger pretty... Souls, obviously. <laughs> no, that that was a lot of fun. Like uh, they this um, they they got these two houses up in up in the hills in uh, it's I guess I guess it was the Hollywood Hills. Yeah, it was like yeah. just above um. Uh, whiskey a go go, which was cool. It was like up in the hills above that. It was, it was, it was. I love the Doors, and they were the house band of the Whiskey a Go Go in like the '60s. Yeah. So it was really cool. Kind of, I was like, I am familiar with that place on Sunset Boulevard and stuff. And they had this beautiful view from the the house up there and stuff. That's where the podcast was. That was a ton of fun, like hanging out with them and meeting all the people and. Oh, you think that's a pad, really dude? Wait until you see my fifteen hundred square foot home in the shithole of Florida. This place Dude, is... you're a Florida man. You yeah. got a pet alligator? Nah, man. Alligators freak me out. They're so I don't know, like carnal and weird. I don't know. They freak me out. But, How um, big of an alligator do you think you could beat in a fight? Well, you know what's weird about alligators is uh, they kind of cap out on length pretty early, and then they just mm. get girthy and big. And so, like mm. a five foot alligator, you know, one of them, uh, a young one, you could pick up by the neck and squash its head. And then, uh, as I've done many times, wow. no, I haven't done I was about to say, that, <laughs> yeah. that was a visceral description. <laughs> and then, like, but sometimes, like, a six-foot alligator it could be, like, a hundred-pound difference, and that fucking thing could take off your foot, you know? Like, so there's, uh, I, I would say, maybe a couple years old. Okay. I, could probably I saw take a huge off. alligator on a golf course in a video. Yeah. You know what's fucking weird? It, yeah, you and fucking everybody else in America. <laughs> it's like, it's one of the most common videos. <laughs> it's like, look at this big fucking alligator that this old guy filmed. <laughs> that's like all over I mean, Facebook. But uh, it's it's fun, you know, a big a big ass alligator. You're like, that's a dinosaur. It's a dinosaur. Yeah. What's weird about him is, you say like, can you take it in a fight? If it's like laying on a rock and it hasn't eaten in a while and it's just kind of like chilling there and it's like low energy or whatever, or it's cold. Jeb can... Bush, low energy. Yeah. <laughs> low energy alligator. Dude, if that alligator has low T, you know, you can walk over there and just like clamp its mouth shut and it can't do anything. Like they have no muscle to open up their mouth. But Oh, because it's all closed. Yeah, it's all they, like. But they... <laughs> but they have like one little muscle that goes like this. <laughs> And so, like, that's why the uh, the alligator hunter guy, crocodile hunter, you just walk up and just grab it like it was a wallet and just <laughs> grab the, the mouth. And they were like, okay, I'm fucked now. So <laughs> they the, don't really have claws, do they? Uh, they they do, of, but they like, can't move it, you know? It's, oh, yeah, they're like... <laughs> so in January, I could beat a big fucking alligator. In the middle of August, when it's nice and hot, I couldn't beat any alligator. Oh, <laughs> uh, Yeah. So tell me about those rap battles. What's the worst rap battle you've ever had? The most the worst rap yeah. battle? Have you ever had? I assume it's a lot like stand-up comedy where it's like sometimes you just do it and everybody's like, oh, I'm man. not vibing no, with so that. The thing is I always went super, super hard in my prep. And I was like, if they don't fuck with this, it, this is on them. Yeah. So I always – and I always did a lot of research. I always studied – um uh, my, my opponents and stuff said stuff that I knew would res vibe. And it's also, the thing is, you gain that ear for what's good by watching and listening to a lot of rap battles. So um, I never had one where I, like, bombed. One I was really sick for, but I was still prepared. And so my voice was like this. Yeah. It's so even when I was... I, it probably sounded like I was trying to put on some kind of, like, try hard, like, gravelly in a world. Yeah. You know, type thing, so. Trying to sound like that fucking guy Stitches. You ever seen him? Like, yells oh, and all the, that. Yeah. Oh, he, I remember he had the beef with the game. I yeah. remember that. Did you see the, the game's manager knocks him out, and that guy falls like a, just a sack of cinder blocks, man. I thought it was actually the game that did that. Oh, I thought it was his manager. But 
He like did that Actually, thing where I he mean, like stiffened up and fell back. It was fucking funny. Burr! Yeah, Timber. It looked like the opposite of a fucking vampire coming out of his coffin. You know, like he just yeah. went straight back. Yeah. So, so. Uh, I was actually bored this morning. I was, I, I, I bet I was, I was like, I think he's going to ask you about, uh, battle rap. So I wrote this morning what I'd say to you if I was in a rap battle with you. You want to hear it? Yeah, sure. Go for it, man. <laughs> all right. All right. <clears throat> so they said, in battle rap, they always go, I said, so I said, General Sam, what a hell of a man. Old as hell. Back in 70, probably headed to Nam. Unintelligent and he's an irrelevant sham and got a big mouth like a pelican. Damn, but don't be sweating it, fam, because the message at hand is this jester is bland with a forehead like the elephant man. Poof. Alec- <laughs> Alakazam, that Sam's hopes going up in smoke. You huffing coke if you think his son is dope. What a joke. And speaking of coke, you said I was sniffing lines. What a silly lie. That was something to see. That's just me with his wife. And y'all like, what does he mean? See, that white girl got bagged up with a G, you. Nothing to me. This fool is dumb partly. And I'm moving up smartly. General Sam, t- you and what army, bruh? Hardly. But now I'm on the podcast having a hell of a time. Embellishing the cleverest rhymes. I'm a Chad who's entered his prime. He's a rat. You can tell by how we bend in his spine. So now I'm in his YouTube cash, robbing him blind. Heck, pennies and dimes. I'm taking whatever I find. Yoink, all your shekels are mine. Yeah, that would work <laughs> if this was monetized in any way. <laughs> that would work. <laughs> Dude, this shit's been manually demonetized. Like, if I go to the option, it's like... How do you do that? How does that work? A fucking guy from YouTube came walking down here and was like... And took that shit. It's like the it's grayed out. There's nothing I can do to manually demonetize. Yeah, like they came down and said, "Nah, ain't gonna work." I was like, "What the hell, man?" I've seen uh, if you go on YouTube, there's like uh, breastfeeding tutorials that are monetized, and it's just ladies getting their titties sucked on Sedu- by babies. No, seductively with like the like uh, it's it's under the guise of education. And they have like uh-huh. breast pumps. And yeah. they're, they're like, this oh, is- so there's no baby involved. No, they're like, this is how you do it. God. And they just like shove their big titty in there. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, ours. That's you want to watch some together? <laughs> no. No. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> maybe- Actually, maybe you should put some on the channel and see what they say. Yeah. See what they- maybe they can monetize then. You can-, then. Can, be like, yeah. you can say, yeah, you can say they're that that they have no that they're being anti-feminist. Right. Then you've got ammunition. So, uh. Are you going to cut that out or leave that, like, the, the, the silence, the, uh, the, like, 30 I'm just saying my editor better cut it out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> or you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> he's probably going to leave it in now. Yeah, he's, he's probably like, going to. <laughs> just Because all it is is just me just sitting here on the verge of tears because my spine's all fucked up, just fucking reading my phone. <laughs> so do you find, um, uh, do you find it is a good match with your whole, like, I play video games for a living type lifestyle? Yeah, you know, I like would say so. Getting out of the house and doing something other than staring at a computer screen. Like that. <laughs> you know? I mean, what's a bummer about this whole COVID thing is you can't go to the gym and, like, half the fun of lifting is, like, I used to have this really sick gym that I went to called Five Rings Fitness, and it was, um, like, my, my friend ran it, and it was it was just so cool. Uh, it was all these, you know, it was a bunch of bodybuilders, powerlifters, people who do CrossFit, people who do Olympic weightlifting. Um, and there were some, like, seriously strong people there. So, you know, you'd go hang out there, and it was motivating. And, like, you know, it, if you're doing a hard set, people would be like, yeah, Emma! You know? Yeah. So, and now I go work out at, you know, Gl- Globo Gym 43. So it's not quite the same, but it's still nice not – also, I, I now lift inside my house, so when I'm deadlifting, I have to I have to I put the bar down so gingerly. Yeah. So it's kind of hard to like get in the zone. And you're like, okay, let's not break the floor here, chief. So, uh, at the the Globo Gym you're going to now, are you allowed to grunt and make noise? Yeah, it's not Planet Fitness. I actually got kicked out of Planet Fitness because I started my lifting at Planet Fitness. Yeah. And um, the uh, I was using chalk, and so that was no. The first thing was I wanted to deadlift there, but I was like super gin. I like let it down super gingerly, 
Uh, but they still were like, yeah, um, excuse me, sir. Uh, you can't do that. Yeah. And I'm like, um, like, what are you, what are you talking about? Like, you're not bothering anyone. And the, their, their whole Planet Fitness's whole aesthetic is like the no judgment zone, but it's actually like more judgment because if you, if you like, for example, if someone who'd never lifted in their life went to, um, the, the gym I used to go to five rings fitness, which is like a lunkhead gym. If, if you take that planet fitness um, kind of terminology, it, they would be so supportive. And that that's because they're like, we want to see everyone succeed. We want to see everyone do well. Yeah. Um, but, but then planet fitness is like, um, you can't do that. And there's Tootsie rolls on Wednesdays and there's pizza on Fridays or whatever. It's like, Bro, you, you just you just want nobody to actually come to the gym, so you can charge them nothing a month, but still collect from a lot of people. And um, it's it, and then I eventually got kicked out because I was using chalk, and they're like, "All right, no, you can't do this." And I was like, "All right, just cancel my <laughs> they membership." They want you to. It's time. They want you it's to time. drop that that barbell on your on your throat. What's yeah, the, I was like, "What's with the what? lack of chalk? Why can't? What's with chalk? What's I, wrong with that?" I don't know. I don't know. But it's one of those things. I. The thing is, what's cool now is Planet Fitness is such a bad view by people. It's just dirt cheap. That's the thing. Like that's yeah. their business plan. Get lots of people who never come to the gym on the on the you know membership payroll, and then uh, yeah, we're good. Huh. But it's uh, it's just it's just really lame because I think once you learn about actually lifting, you realize how unhelpful and kind of judgmental and unpleasant places like that are. Well, I'm gonna be on Planet Fitness's side here because. Oftentimes when I'm on my elliptical and there's these guys grunting and sweating mm-hmm. and, and screaming while they lift weights, it intimidates me. Mm-hmm. I feel emasculated, you know? Are they, are they very muscular and big? Yeah. And I'm like, you know, that maybe they should put down those heavy weights and maybe carry me out into the parking lot and have their way with me. And run. <laughs> no. I, I knew this was going that direction from the start of it. I was, I was like, Sam is going to get ravaged by the end of this uh, anecdote. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> Somehow it's going to wind its way there. I don't know how. <laughs> He's going to get ravaged by the end of this. I already know. So um, I'm going to have a uh, – I'm trying to get Swagger Souls on here, and he's playing mm-hmm. hard to get. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but uh, I'm trying to punch above my weight in every possible way. <laughs> I got Maybe uh-huh. if I get you on here, I'll set a good precedent. Oh, like, I'm the gateway. Yeah. Okay, I see it. I, yeah. I see how it is. I'm just I'm just meat on the menu. You're yeah. like, yeah. It's you, you're, you're... then Swagger Souls, and then uh, Jerry Seinfeld. I've been really wanting to pick his brain, <laughs> you know. But um, That's one rich man. Isn't he the richest comedian? I think so. He might have been passed by, like, you know, Milton Berle or someone like that. Who's that? <laughs> these old TV shows from 1936. <laughs> How do you know these things, you boomer? <laughs> Dude. Oh, okay. Yeah, I pulled him up. Yeah. Oh, okay. I know this guy. Yeah. Apparently, he has a huge cock, by the way. Really? Yeah. He used to whip it out at parties and play the piano with it. He would, like, slap it on the keys. But he, um, get this. Check out his show, dude. His old show, it, me and my uh, editor were talking about this, dude. Uh-huh. It, it's so strange because, like, TV and stuff used to be so corporate. Everybody thinks things are corporate now. But mm-hmm. back in the day, his TV show was called the Texaco Roadhouse Show or something. And it was owned <laughs> It was owned by Texaco. Like, they were the main sponsor. It, their name was in the fucking title. Like, what if, like, Family Guy was called, like, Family Guy Pepsi Time or something, you know? Like, uh, and so he's sitting there doing his thing. It's called the Texaco Roadhouse Show or something. And then... Texaco backs out, and so they then Buick became his main sponsor, and it's, it turned into the Buick Burl Show. <laughs> like, Buick the car <laughs> that's company. Got a, that's got a good ring to it, the Buick you, Burl Show. Yeah, like, I want corporations da, to start... Da, 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 <laughs> I, want, da, da, da. I want corporations to start, like, heavy-handedly putting their marketing <laughs> into shit, you know? Speaking of big penises, though, did you know that Rasputin had, like, an absolute schlonger? That's that's the whole thing of Rasputin. Nobody gives a fuck about him talking to. What the, do you mean? Nobody... That's like that's his thing. He was like the was... the Russian guy that fucked all the aristocracy's wives. Yep, yep. That was his thing. And then apparently they have his cock cut off and in a jar somewhere. Yeah, in a jar yeah. in a museum. That's crazy. Which I by the way, see I, wanna... ho- I hope that thing's fake because that's a fucked up looking cock. If that's what pleases a lady, I'm almost glad I can't please a lady because that fucking thing. <laughs> It, like, it's so tapered. It's like a traffic cone. Like, it's so... 
I, I'd have to pull. I'd have to pull, pull that it up. thing up. It's so oddly shaped. All right, I'm gonna. It better be uh, the vinegar in that jar, fucking that thing up. It's like it's a pickled cock. Oh yeah, it's well, it's got yeah, it is like a traffic cone. It's got a, it's got a very sturdy base. Yeah. And then it kind of like, it's it doesn't really have much curvature to it though, so I don't know if it can hit that, that that fabled G spot. You know what I mean? That's a myth. Those don't exist. Uh, okay. <laughs> That's a myth. <laughs> God, I hope it's a myth. I'm <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah, look at Rasputin's face, though, dude. That's the only way that guy could have made it. He looks like a foot. His hairline's worse than mine, you know. Well, his hairline's decent. It's a, he's got that like um, thinning at the crown. Mm. I I think I'd rather have a bad hairline than thinning at the crown. Yeah. Because at least with, like, the thinning hairline, as it goes back, you can, well, one, you could get, like, a, uh, what is it called, the plants, the implants or whatever. Mm. Or you could do, um, eventually, it might connect, and you can have the Dr. Phil hairline, where it looks like a public toilet seat. It just goes around the edge. It doesn't <laughs> doesn't meet up in the middle, you know? It's like a, like a laureate, like a, like a Roman. Uh, yeah, the Caesar Roman crown. Head, head, the Caesar yeah. crown, yeah. yeah. The olive branch. Yeah. 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 But, um, oh, yeah, anyways, what I was going to say about Swagger Souls, uh, well, I, I've always heard that those guys are drug fiends. Mm-hmm. Right? They're always talking about narcotics and stuff. Mm-hmm. Did you see any hard drug usage while you were there? A lot of edibles. Like, yeah. like dank, dank edibles. Okay. Like, that's the, I'd say that's the, that's like the, well, because if you think about it, it's like that's the, the standard one, you know, if you're just having a having a chill day or having a fun day or something, that's what you're gonna go for. You're not gonna if, doing some uh, psychedelics or something takes a little more planning and prep because you don't just want to be like, well, let's do psychedelics today, you know. Yeah. So I think that's kind of more. But yeah, I definitely say uh, that they, they are ever present in a low key way. Okay, I, I was, you know, if if pot wasn't legal there, I was about to say you're a fucking narc because you were you were supposed no, to keep is. your lips zipped. You were supposed to be like, nah, it man. Is. There's, there's, uh, they weren't doing Bye-bye. shit, <laughs> but the, uh, <laughs> so they live up in Hollywood Hills. Oh, no, they don't. They, they, they all live in Australia. That was just, um, an Airbnb uh, yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Huh. Wait, so even Swagger Souls lives in Australia? Yep. They all live there. I think near like Melbourne, I believe. What the fuck? All of them? Yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah, yeah. I want to visit. I want to visit Australia. I've never been. Dude, if I went to Australia, I would not be sitting on the coast anywhere. I'd be. I, w- I want to see what's in the middle. <laughs> There's a desert, and it's like an inhospitable wasteland in the I middle. I know. That's why I want to see it. It's like the surface of <laughs> Mars. Like, holy shit, dude. Like, come on. There's nothing in every direction. There's just nothing. So that's what you're interested in. Not like the immense coastal beauty or the wonder of the world, Great Barrier Reef. The Great the, Barrier Reef's dead, first of all. Second of all, the uh, I feel like we got a few, got a couple, couple years on it. There's like four it. fish swimming on that fucking thing. It's just everything else is dead. <laughs> I don't want to sit on the edge of the world and look out at the water. Like I want to turn around and go towards the the cool inland spots. You know, there's, I want to see the, the Aboriginal people, beautiful culture. Oh. Okay, you know, they're hanging out in the middle still, right? I I can't speak to that. You you don't you don't know. Uh, I don't know. Around. I have no idea. You know I have they, no idea. they had to put out a, a PSA telling uh, telling them not to sleep in the roads anymore because they would just lay out a sleeping bag in the middle of the road. What? That's such a well. I guess it's flat. Yeah, they're like, hey, this is a nice flat spot, and then a fucking semi truck comes by, <laughs> <laughs> and then they're like, wow, I hope that thing doesn't come back. Let's throw out the other sleeping bag and sleep next to this dead guy. But it. Uh, yeah, they had to put out a like a bunch of signs everywhere, like "Don't camp here, <laughs> don't do that." No but camp no, arena. I want to I want to go check that place out because it's like I feel like it's still you can't really get lost in America anymore. You know, like every, the the map is filled in, but I feel like Australia. Hey, you could go to Montana. You could Alaska, easy, easy Alaska. Alaska, easy. yes. But yes, Montana, Alaska. no, because uh, remember those two gay guys tried having a relationship and they made a whole fucking movie about them. Was that in a Ala- Was that in Montana? That was in Montana. Broke how did the Mountain. camera crew find them? Yeah, I don't how did know. the camera? 
They were up in the trees, in the alpine yeah. trees, filming them as they just rammed away on that ranch. I've not, oh, I've not seen that movie. Uh, you know what the weirdest, here's a little trivia about that movie. Um, about that documentary. One of the guys in that relationship ends up becoming an actor later and he plays the Joker in The Dark Knight. Did you know that? Really? Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. That's incredible. That that's, a, incredible. that's a motivating story, actually. And the other like guy the was you... Aqua FPS. Did you know that? <laughs> no, I didn't. I mean, I knew he was old, but not that old. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's weird. It's like, the it's small world, you know? That's inspiring that you can just go through such changes. Go from being a gay cowboy to uh, some, something entirely different. The menace of, of Gotham, mm. which, by the way, looks talking? looks remarkably like uh, New York City. <laughs> Have mm. you noticed that? That's weird. I believe it. Yeah. Now that you bring it up, I can see it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I've never been to Gotham. I'm planning on it one day. You know, I've looked it up, and I don't even – I can't even find it on the map. I think it's like a, the white man's Wakanda. You know, mm. like hidden behind a force field somewhere. They say yeah. in the comics it's in New Jersey, but yeah, no one, no one goes to New Jersey unless you're already there. So New Jersey's a shithole. There's no way it's there. <laughs> There's no fucking way. <laughs> well, maybe that's where the portal to it is. That's the yeah. secret. Yeah. It's like that's New Jersey keeps it safe because everyone's like, "All right, kids, we're going on 95. <laughs> Roll up the windows." <laughs> you know, it's weird. Is like. I have never been to New Jersey except for to like to land in the the airport and take the little train over or whatever. And Newark? Uh, yeah, in New York, yeah. Which is funny because I was like I was a, a teenager and they were like, "Hey, you're landing. Uh, welcome to Newark." And I thought the guy just had an accent and he was saying New York and I get out and there's just shipping containers everywhere and it's just a rusty oh. shithole and there's like the mafia's dumping bodies in the water. I'm like, "This place fucking sucks." New York? <laughs> this is supposed to be the center of American culture. This place fucking sucks. And I didn't realize yeah. they just named it similar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Going up um if you're in the Amtrak, yeah. going up uh like on the East Coast, you're like, "Oh, our country's uh getting a little rusty here, here boys. This is uh this is some this is some decaying infrastructure. You took the Amtrak? Uh, multiple times. I dude, I took the Amtrak from Florida, from Jacksonville up to uh uh right there at fuck, where where did we get off? We got off like right there in the middle. I forget the uh. name of that that station. Anyways, so we went all the way up and like when you get to DC this is just a uh, a testament to how shitty the South is. But <laughs> you you're on a diesel engine the whole way up to DC, and then they're like, "Okay, we've reached civilization. Put on that electric engine," and then you just go Row! into the sunset like as fast uh -huh. as possible. You go like triple the speed, and I was like, "Wow, this is amazing! Like the North is so much better." And then, uh, which was great on the way there because it was like the first half was sluggish, and then we hurriedly got there. But on the way back, I was homesick. And I was in that little Amtrak thing, and I whiz all the way down to D.C., and then they put on that fucking choo-choo train, coal-generated fucking <laughs> engine. Titanic boiler yeah. room uh, yeah, energy. They, they had a, a guy with the little striped hat shoveling coal into the fucking <laughs> thing. And, uh, and we were going like, back. <laughs> yeah, oh, my, get on there. And it, we, it, took them, it took us like a 20 hours or something to get home. Oof. It was so slow. We like went half the speed all the way home. And I mean, when we're older, it's gonna be the entire Northeast is gonna be one big mega city. Like, it's, you're just never gonna leave the city. And there, and it's gonna be like DC to Boston is gonna be just the. I mean, unless there is a societal collapse in November when Trump cha challenges the 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 realness of uh, him losing the election, and then we have a constitutional crisis, a civil yeah. war, and uh, nukes drop. But that's Assuming that doesn't happen. Do you think Biden's too old and senile to be president? It it's it's definitely concerning, but yeah. I feel like he's also not about to like do some some wild things and be like uh it's it's le it's by far lesser of two evils. Yeah. You know I feel like rather you know I feel like it is. It's like when uh, uh I feel I feel like your home's getting broken into. And you, and you turn around and you're like, all right, what do I have to defend myself with? And then you see that old heirloom uh, uh, bolt-action rifle your dad gave you and the stock's all wobbly 
and you can see air between the breach, you know, like it doesn't close mm-hmm. all the way and the fucking barrels bent and you're like, well, this is the last shot. I mean, <laughs> I have <laughs> one, two, like, I fucking hope this works. Like, that's how I feel like everybody is looking at Biden. Like, fu- please work. <laughs> you know, that fucker's going to, you know, like votes are going to be going in and he's going to have like an aneurysm or something. He's so fucking old. The guy is just ancient. Why can't we have someone I mean, that's 50? Like, they act like that's why, so young. <laughs> why can't, why can't I we don't just know. have one person that's know, like, man. hey, I'm, a, I'm just a well-traveled 50-year-old guy? <laughs> What's wrong with that? <laughs> what what we, was we, wrong we with it. Yang? I don't want to get political here, but Yang was the <laughs> shit. <laughs> what do you, he was, like, one of the most, like, uh, far, far left of the, of the bunch. There would, there's no way that guy would like, get elected in a million years. Yeah, but he wasn't fucking old as shit. <laughs> also true, but he was, I mean, he was also sane, which, you know, call me crazy, I, but I feel I, like the president should be sane. You know? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I feel like we're not, we're decades off from universal basic income, to be totally honest. Well, it's no, 100% going to be a thing think in the about future. This. You got to think about this. Just because a president believes in it when he gets in doesn't mean it's going to happen. You oh, know? agreed, but, but running on a platform that makes you unelectable isn't, you're not going to get elected. Oh, now you're just talking like a politician, dude. What? Who cares about electability? No, I'm kidding. Well, if you want to, if you want to, if you want to win an election, then you well, gotta worry about that. Everybody thought that, like, you know, uh, uh, sexually abusing women and screaming at uh, black people was not an electability thing. And fucking, <laughs> okay, all right, too Luke, who's in the fucking White House? Do you see that awesome wall he built? Where he like he what? like he built a fence around the White House, and then people quickly turned it into a memorial for at like, Lafayette Square. I don't know, around uh, the White yeah. House. It's a big circle of chain link fence that people have Yeah, been, I, was, I saw know. it. I saw the actual – I didn't see memorials on it though. Yeah, people have like – they've the... plastered it with like posters and shit of all the people that have been killed. And so now like if you're in the White House looking out, you just see the back of paper all the way around. Mm. There's no way to see everybody. Wow. Yeah, yeah it's kind of probably... fucking weird. It's hard to see from the bunker anyway, so. Do you think what, – at what <laughs> point is he going to look out and go – Wow, they really don't like me. Because, <laughs> you know, I, a guy I, with that much ego, he's probably like, man, that's like, you know, he's still looking out going, that's only like 0.03% of the population. I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. Like low key punching air in the White House right now. <laughs> you think? How much do you think I, I it know. sucks to be Melania right now? Yeah. <laughs> Just, I, I don't know. I mean, honestly, she could have. I could have been like, yeah, she's a victim of circumstance, but then she uh, plagiarized Michelle Obama's speech, and everyone was like, she's that not was such a good speech. You know why? And then, because uh, she's a fucking model, and she didn't sign up for this shit. Yeah, she's... but like, bro, this is this. You can't just plagiarize a speech. You can when you're like, hey, I signed up I learned, to suck this that. nasty orange Cheeto cock every once in a while <laughs> and drink fucking uh, mimosas every day. Like that's all she wanted to do. 10 years ago, she didn't think she was going to be the fucking first lady, so she just went like, hey, what'd she do? Oh, okay. That, <laughs> I, that I bet. Cool. <laughs> it was cool when she did it. I could do it, too. Why not? <laughs> you know? <sighs> you still there? <laughs> no. No? <laughs> <laughs> you just, like, shut off for a bit. I thought you had a stroke. <laughs> that was fucking weird. <laughs> yeah. So, uh... So, anyways, you're not a huge Trump supporter. No, no. I, well, I think it's a, it's like it's a kind of a common decency thing. It's just like if you if you've publicly groping women and uh, being a bully to the army veterans and stuff, it's like it's you don't even really have to be political to be like this guy's a bully and no bully. Yeah, that's why I if I ever run for president, I'm just gonna keep all that shit in secret. I won't do it publicly. Mm. Well, you gotta, well, that's the you gotta keep that's it the secret. Tricky part. That is the tricky that's... part. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta keep it under wraps. Now, do you think th- you'll ever get canceled? Me for something? Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Like, there's always people that are like trying to cancel everybody. Mm-hmm. I remember, you know, Pestily, mm-hmm. the nicest, most wholesome guy there is. There's like a picture. Really? If, there's a picture of a guy that looks vaguely like him holding a gun. I saw that. I saw that. Yeah. I saw that. Which, by the way, I thought was just like a funny, absurdist picture anyways. It's not like. Yeah, it's not cancelable. 
It's not like they, think, it's like the, that Vietnam picture of the guy executing the, the Viet Cong soldier or whatever. Yeah. It's not like that. <laughs> it's not like after the shutter was taken, he was like, all right, and he pulled the trigger. It was just a Like joke. 20 seconds later. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, I don't know. I think everybody's just searching out there to get, um, uh, to cancel other people. I remember one of my first guests was a, a, a trans porn star, right? Mm-hmm. And I was asking mm-hmm. her all these questions. Because I don't know if you know, but that shit's kind of confusing. <laughs> and apparently, you are like the root of all evil for asking questions. Like, seeking knowledge is like the worst thing in the world, right? Cause, Interesting. You know, I don't care who the fuck you're fucking, right? I don't, it doesn't bother me. And, uh, and, the, <laughs> and like, she, as a porn star, got like canceled by other trans people for even answering questions. Wow. You know, like, they're like, you're done with this group. And I'm like, why? <laughs> like, That's unhelpful to their cause, I'm sure. Because you would it's think, like, if you, yeah. people, if people can answer and then understand it, then they'll be much more open and be like, oh, yeah, I get that now. That's, you know, it's, if you're like, how dare you ask this question? It's like, you're shutting, you're shutting off any people who want to be supportive and helpful and stuff so i agree with you or well i think like one of the weird points i brought up was like i think my uncle he died like a couple years ago that fucking dude probably lived his whole life not even knowing that you could get a sex change you know like there's so Mm -hmm. many people act like uh people need to know trans pronouns and everything like right now and i'm like i i just want you guys to know like two years ago this fucking guy, this guy died, and he didn't even know you existed, let alone the proper pronouns and everything. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So there's a whole lot of information that still has to make its way over to redneck America before, <laughs> before pronouns are even introduced as a common knowledge thing, right? <laughs> I think we need to get over the whole hump of, like, yeah, that's, that's a woman with a cock. <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, that's a thing now, you know? Because I, I know that's been a thing for like 30, 40 years or whatever. I don't know how long. Probably, it's probably been a thing pretty much forever. Yeah. But it's just we didn't really but know surgically? about Surgically? Uh, well, so, uh, you know, like w- was, she born, was she born a man and then became ma- male to female? No, I, I'm, I'm talking about like, you know, if there's like a, a woman that was mm-hmm. born a w- biologically uh, yeah. a man and then gets everything cut off. And then is now Oof. a woman, you know. Like I don't think that surgery's been around a whole uh, a whole lot. Ah, long, that know? would. Hurt. I wonder how much that would hurt. Uh, it'd probably feel like getting your uh, cock cut off, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure you're under. Good... You're probably put under an anesthetic. Holy and shit! But... I, f- I hope so. <laughs> but but like, would you, you know how people who get their arms chopped off of ghost limb? I wonder if you'd have ghost cock. I don't know. Yeah, like that's you could weird. be. You could be like. Be like, I have an erection right now. I have a ghost erection. Yeah. But then you could see. These are the say, questions you needed to ask. These are. Have you ever had a ghost erection? Well, <laughs> <laughs> have you ever had a clit boner? That's what you ask. <laughs> a cloner. <laughs> yeah. Now my grandma has. She had her leg taken off. From cancer, <laughs> right? No, no. She had her leg <laughs> taken off. Her leg. It was her back. Okay, well, it's just like, <laughs> yeah, speaking of clit boners. Yeah, speaking of clit boners. My grandma. My grandma got her leg taken off, and she has that phantom limb pain. And like, there's a way to fix it. What you do is you take a mirror, and you put it next to where your limbs taken off, right? And then, uh, and then you put your other leg in front of it, and you like look into the mirror and see the reflection of your other leg. And so it gives your eye and mind the illusion that your leg is still there. And then you scratch where it would be or something? No, it just it just seeing it there is like uh, almost like an equilibrium thing. Like you, mm. you're like, oh, okay, it's actually there. And then we it, go, we good. Yeah, it stops like freaking out because uh, there's like some inner mind that's always fighting against your regular mind apparently inside your, your head, which is fucking weird lizard to me. Brain. Yeah, the lizard brain, exactly. Have you ever been in like a fight? Uh, I guess a few, but yeah. not nothing super recently. Like in in college, definitely like maybe maybe spurred. It's always alcohol. Alcohol is is always what will cause things like that because because it it prevents cooler heads from prevailing. Yeah. So that's why it's called um, liquid courage. You know. Yeah, but um. 
Yeah, I guess a couple times in in college, I was in one one good scuffle in college. That was it was literally like it was the the day of a of a bar crawl, and it was the whole you know the whole squad begins drinking at like eleven a.m. and it was probably it was probably one a.m. two a.m. So it was being like somewhat drunk for a solid twelve hours that will that will kind of ma- make your somewhat susceptible to just being like Rah! yeah you know I think. So, huh? But, like, but uh, when you get into a fight like that, well, I guess I, I guess that would override it. But have you ever been in like a stone cold sober fight? Mm, I mean, like maybe uh, I wrestled in high school. So um, you seem like the fucking guy that would wrestle in high school. Yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't very good though. You got, I was, you um, got like the body of a small Shrek, you know? <laughs> like really, pull the earwax out. Really fucking Shrek. like low and, and, and like yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm about to sweep the leg on your ass. You, yeah, you'd be hard to throw into a trunk of a car. You know, you just yeah. fucking all arms and legs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Assume a power pose. Yeah, you're just like. <laughs> Just one of those squat fucking guys. Uh, yeah, that, that it, you do seem like a wrestler. Have you guy. been in a fight? No, I was, just, a- I was asking because, like, there's that flight or fight response. You're talking about, like, the lizard brain, you know, like your instinctual mm. brain. And, like, it's weird how, like, if someone's charging at you, before, it's not even, like, subconsciously. You're, you're just, you'll just make up your mind. I'm going to fucking lay <laughs> this guy out or I'm going to run. Yeah. And, yeah. like, I don't know. I've never been in a situation where flight or flight fight or flight takes place because I, I was expecting like you were gonna have some epic story like yeah dude three guys no. bar fight hot girl no they were like hey babes come back here and then i was like don't you dare talk to her like that and then they Do were I like seem like the guy that's oh, yeah. ever in a bar <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i was just waiting to hear this like this white knight story i was looking forward to it i thought that Do was i seem like here. a white knight to you <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> By the way, I think that fucking, that weird-ass, like, planet bar you brought me to in Seattle was the first time I've ever been in a bar, ever. Okay, that, I don't know what, the, the Facebook, the, oh, no, yeah, oh, yes, yeah. the, the, <laughs> but the Facebook party before was one of the weirdest things I've ever been to. You know why that was so great? Is because it was populated, it like, it, it was... From the top down, it was like, oh, we're going to make this EDM party. We're going to uh, – we got the lights. We got the laser light show going on. We got the music. Te- check everything to make a great rave. Now let's populate it with people that have never been to a rave and have no interest <laughs> in it. Um, so j- to, to give people who are watching context, uh, it was you, Aqua, and then kind of the rest. It was like a few other people that were – Bizzle was there too. They have names. And then, They're people. Yeah. Okay, fuck off. This fucking guy, he gets a couple million subs, and he's just like, so it was me, Aqua, uh, Sam. You know, we're going down the descending list of subs, and then the riffraff. <laughs> the riffraff were there. And, uh, anyway, so the we rabble. go into this this Facebook party, and um, we we all had wristbands to get in or whatever. And so then there's the, – the main area is there's one bar, like two bars, and they're both just swarming with people, like – a like shoulder shoulder crowd that you would have to just wait forever to get into but then there's a vip area where they're like if you're if you're a, if you're a facebook v gamer vip you get in and it felt like a hitman level i remember that because it was like there were these multiple different areas where it's like oh if i had this outfit i could get into there yeah if i had this outfit i could and then they had borderlands 3 and people sitting in bean bags in the back of the edm rave do you remember that part yeah and there was that was what was great about it was like everybody that was in there was just like a nerd, right? Mm-hmm. And it was totally not their scene. And so they were just clinging to the hopes that maybe a little bit of alcohol will make this not fucking horrible. <laughs> so everybody was swarming those bars and they were handing out like Dixie cups with like, they were just like dribble, like a dribble of alcohol and giving it out for free. Cause you yeah. know, Facebook doesn't have any fucking money. So they were like, hey, yeah, what we- was that? I was expecting far more from the- do you remember that huge bouncer dude though? Like this like yeah. comically large human? Yeah. It was like <laughs> They got this big fucking Samoan guy to guard the <laughs> VIP room. I just ex- it's like Zuckerberg, dude. I expected to walk in, they were just throwing Patron bottles at people, but no. That's what like, I was expecting. They were doing like little dribble dri- I don't even drink and I was still pissed off. And uh yeah. 
it, I remember we asked you, we we're like, dude, you, to go up there to the bouncer guy and tell him you got a million subs. See what he does. <laughs> see if you can get in. See if you can get in. And he, he walked up and he's just like, he'll walk up to him. Hey, can I get in there? I got a million subs. That's why I see from behind. It's just you like looking up. And the guy's just looking down. And he's like, no. <laughs> no, he's like, no, absolutely no, not. not at all. Absolutely not. not. Yeah, absolutely not. Yeah. That was a. Uh, that was a that was a fun time though. That was like the first time I had ever seen other YouTube people, mm-hmm. and they're always cool every time. I mm-hmm. I haven't met one fucking jackass yet, you know, mm-hmm. which I'm expecting to. Have you met anybody that you absolutely hate? No, not no. in person. No. no, no, not at all. Yeah, not at all. Oh, you said not in person. Is there somebody? Not in person that you absolutely hate? No, I'm, no, I'm just saying not in person. I'm just like. Yeah. I, I I don't really I don't really hate any YouTubers. That's the thing. There's you like see, no, I need it, to get a less chipper person on here. I need another because I'm like such yeah, a pessimistic. Spill the tea, sis. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to get like a an angry person on here because you're all like fucking happy go lucky and stuff. You know? Well, so so what what is you who who you said you've never meet meet met anyone that you didn't like, but what about online? To, to spill the tea, sis. Oh no, spill it. No, I'm not saying like. What I what I was expecting, right, was I would show up to Seattle and there would be like these egos bumping, you know, but everybody was really cool. Like I, you know, sometimes like for example, Serge, you know that guy. I yeah. expected him to come down and be like, "I edit better than all you fucking guys," and I'm. Like, <laughs> and then he's you, super cool. And then you see him and he's super all suave cool. and shit, and I was like, "This fucking guy's gonna talk down to us." I can smell it, and he was cool as hell. <laughs> he yeah. was cool as fuck, and. uh um, yeah, I can't think of anybody. Yeah, that, uh, Serge C and D Blood and I went on a walk around Seattle at night. We like walked along the whole um, kind of the edge of the edge of the water there. I guess it's the Puget. I guess is what it's called. That's not a good name. The Puget. <laughs> the Puget. Puget. Oh, Puget. Okay. Puget. Dude, is the C&D, pungent Puget. <laughs> yeah, the pungent. Tell me, C and D Blood isn't the most YouTuber YouTuber you've ever seen. <laughs> he's he's guy... just like very chill. That guy very, is like, very chill. If if you look up like the word nerd in the dictionary, you get, <laughs> you get, you get that's super bullying. It is not, dude. Dude, he will straight up tell you. We went to Dick's Burgers and we got some burgers and we went back to this park to eat them. And he spent the entire time having a life or death fight with a fucking bee. This bee was like, it would get near him, and he was just like, I'm just, ah! and he was just swinging at it, and he was like, I just want to enjoy my burger. This is not cool, and he would like get up and like run in these semicircles to get away from it, and this bee, it looked like a, a fucking jellyfish from SpongeBob. It was just like, was slow. it a murder hornet? It was One slow. No, hornets? it was a fucking bumblebee or something, and it was just, <laughs> it was just getting near him, and he would freak out. He was flipping, dude. <laughs> And I was like, you can tell this guy never leaves his house. If that is like, <laughs> he was gamer. acting like that shit was just going to dive bomb him and tear his face off. <laughs> it was, it wasn't even getting that close to him. It was freaking him out. <laughs> but yeah, it was, I just really appreciate him showing up and giving me something to laugh at while I was eating my burger. <laughs> that, was, that was really the best part of that. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, oh, so- and Jordan Rance is like the nicest person. Dude, I Absol- wasn't I, I wasn't expecting him to be so fucking nice either. I met him He's in the like lobby. He's like the nicest person. Seriously. The nicest person. Uh, to the uh, to the point of flaw. Like you could tell he's the <laughs> kind of guy you could be like, "Hey man, that's you're awesome. You're Jordan, right? I got a I'm looking for my dog down here. I got lost in this alleyway. Will you help me out?" And he'd be like, "Right oh, Bucko, let's go." And he would like <laughs> follow you down the alley so you can mug him. <laughs> Like he's that, he's so nice. He's like you'd be what? fucking him, and then he'd be like, "Oh, sure. Hey, how can I help? Do you need some money, chap?" <laughs> but like, you almost feel like you almost need to take advantage of him just so you could teach him a lesson. You know, <laughs> yeah, this will teach you not to be so fucking nice. <laughs> no, he's a he's a he's a fucking nice guy. I always told him but that if, aqua guy. Oh, don't even bring him up, dude. Like, if there's a way to soil. <laughs> My, the memory of that beautiful vacation I had in Seattle is to bring up that fucking guy. If it like, and I'm sitting there trying to hang out with my friends that I've met on, on YouTube, you know, these colleagues and everything. And like, we're walking by all these homeless people and we had just went to Starbucks. Right. And like, he was, he was appalled that he had to spend set, uh, six bucks on a nice piping hot thing of coffee. First thing he does walk by a homeless guy, he dumps it in his face. <laughs> 
he was like, that six bucks was worth it. I was like, holy shit, Aqua, this is, this is a human being, you know? <laughs> And, oh, uh, but, uh, it, I have a whole lot of segments of me shitting on him tomorrow for the stream. <laughs> I'm, oh, you, I'm, I'm streaming. For, right thing. I was, I'm streaming for the first time in like two years or something tomorrow, which I didn't fucking know about. Battlestate games just released a list of the channels that have drops, you know, and my channels on it. And I didn't ask for it. <laughs> they get crazy viewers. I hope you realize that. They just With told me they, they were drop? like. They were like, you're going to stream tomorrow. I was like, okay. <laughs> I, guess. <laughs> I guess. So, uh, yeah. You should have played hardball. Tell them, uh, tell them you need some graphics cards in your account found in Raid. That's why I made my I made a video today, and I posted it, and it was like, that was the beginning. That was the whole catalyst for the video was I asked him. I was like, you give me 4D fuel for my account right fucking now. <laughs> Found and raid. So yeah, found can, and you know, raid D fuel. Found or, and raid. Or I'm gonna release a stinker that is gonna destroy your game. And they, <laughs> I'm gonna ruin you. They left me on red, so I was like, "All right, I'm posting it." <laughs> but the uh, yeah, I'm I'm streaming tomorrow, right? And you think it? You think the drop thing will make the viewership go up? Yes. Right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. I, I'm. I wasn't really planning on we, I, that's it. That's like 160k viewers right now. Yeah, but he's known for it. I'm just going to be Yeah, that's that's true. That's yeah. true. But like but people are going to be like, "Wow, look at this guy he hasn't streamed in 2 years." I'm going to sit there and I'm going to try they'll to They'll tune in and realize they'll be like, "Oh, this guy's kind of funny on YouTube. I don't know about this though." Yeah. It's a whole lot harder to be funny for like unedited <laughs> stream and everything. That's that's difficult. Maybe you could do your own cuts, like a, like a wheeze cut. You could be like <laughs> No, I'm doing that. <laughs> I have like all these PSA segments I've already filmed and they're going to be like in the loading screens. I'll play them like commercials. Mm, so you're basically doing a video. May yeah, sort of. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> I, I got like guests coming on and everything. I got, uh, I got Nikita to do uh, a word of inspiration. So I got like a, he sent me a audio file of him going, I believe in you, Sam, you can do it. And then, uh, I got that's uh, great. Yeah, I got Pestily green screen. I have I like I have him superimposed into some clouds, and he's going, "Go on, Sam, I believe in you. You can do this." And I can, and I'll play him during times of of turmoil. You know. Yeah. Which will probably he, be in the first two minutes. Let's be honest. I was gonna say like sometimes it's uh, it's just not your day. Like streaming, yeah. you're gonna you have the worst day of Tarkov you've ever had. Have you ever have you seen have you seen Pestily today today? He's just getting fucking destroyed in that mall over and over again. Really? Not well, is he even, going for killer kills? It's hard to do that. He's not even oh, getting I... into gunfights. He's just walking, and then he'll fall over. It is so depressing. That sucks. Yeah. With 160,000 people watching him fuck up over and over again, that sucks. If you've ever been in... I, I just remember I was in this Minecraft tournament I was streaming about two weeks ago, and I did really badly. Like, I'd never been in a Minecraft tournament before, yeah. and I just remember I died. And I just, I like look it over at chat and I was like, hey, you did a good job, Well, and Like, you know, you, you say, because I didn't die like first. I died like somewhere in the middle, but I like died kind of badly. And then I just remember, I just like, it's seared into my memory. I just see this one person, not sub, not anything, just in, just all lowercase, pathetic. <laughs> that was my alt account. That was. <laughs> I just come here to so the... over that's just all that's all I see. It's like all these yeah. hey well and you know you you did great. Stay positive. You, next time you'll have it. And uh <laughs> just see pathetic. Oh dude, there's nothing worse than like you get nothing but just good uh stuff, right? Good comments. And, and you get the bad ones that are just like you're fat or whatever, which I'm like I'm fine with. But then but then there's like one guy that does a well thought out argument that just dismantles your life, you know, like he's fucking uh goodwill hunting you know to that therapist that he has yeah. where he just destroys his entire life like you get those comments once in a while and you're like it's just fuck it like i'm not gonna do anything today i'm just gonna sit here in bed or do nothing have you ever had that yeah i'm trying to think uh usually though i feel like if the the thing is the people are gonna leave a negative comment I feel like immediately it reduces the quality of the comment. Like most are just going to be like, wow, you're really dumb and stupid. And I didn't laugh at all. And you're cringe. And yeah, cringe. No, no, cringe. no. I'm talking like there, there was this guy. I, that I don't was get like, comments like that. If they're smart, they like the content. I'm sorry. <laughs> is that what it is? It's like you either <laughs> like it or you're wrong. 
<laughs> yes. I should get that yes. thought process. I should. Because mine is like, people are like, okay, look, I'm just going to level with you. I've been a fan for a <laughs> long time. All right. And you used to be great. But uh, you've been on some serious shit for a long time. Two years running. I've watched you just go into just garbage content. This is shit. It's low effort. And they'll explain why. Boop, 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 boop. Down the list why it's shit. They're like, uh, you suck. Uh, your friend, this guy needs to be cut out of the video. This fuck it. Boop. Get him out of there. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, come on. Cut me some slack. Have you ever do, had. Do people get. Sorry. Go, go on. No, go on. You're the guest, bro. Go on. Okay. All right. I was going to say, I feel like you used to be a little bit edgier and spicier. Do people ever get angry? They're like, damn, Sam, you used to like really say things how you felt, and, like how it is. But now you're just, you're just washed up and like you're not even edgy anymore. Really? I think if, if, I, if anything, I've just, I've changed it a little bit. This lady said that I was, uh, I was she, she accused me of dog whistling which I had to look up on Google because I had no idea I was doing this. And apparently uh, what I'm doing is I'm enabling, uh, I, I say one thing, which means one thing to everybody, but then mm. it also is coded subliminal messaging for fringe hate groups is what she said. Yep. And I said, yep. I said, um, I think you think that I'm smarter than I actually am because <laughs> <laughs> I had to look that shit up. I didn't know what the fuck that meant. <laughs> and then, uh, and uh, apparently, uh, that's what I'm doing now, <laughs> according I mean, to her. Yeah, that's. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of examples of that. It's it's usually like like racism and stuff that that the people they like say something, but it was like said by someone else in a racist connotation. Oh, like, like previously, when... maybe a long time ago. Yeah. So it like is an in. It's like a people who are looking for that see it and they're like ah yeah i know what he's talking about <laughs> oh i found and, an example of that like are you talking about when um who was that guy he was another uh, uh black guy that got shot by the cops there's millions now and the um he was jogging was his thing oh uh um, um ahmaud arbery yeah recently yeah it was super recent and I've yeah. seen people, I've even picked up on this with my slow, dim-witted mind, because I'm just on Twitter. I follow a bunch of porn stars, and I'm like, all right, let me scroll down here and find some titties, right? But in between the titties, I saw this tweet where this guy was talking about joggers. And I was like, that seems like that might be double entendre for not not sexual, but like like he, du- might, du- he might mean Jogger black sports. people. No, like he, he meant like he was referring to black people as joggers, you know? Without Yikes. saying the keyword "black people," did he the use the hard word. R on joggers? He did. He didn't even say joggers. Oh, yikes! Yeah. Yikes! By the way, since we're yeah, on the topic think- of racism, I've been thinking about this uh, since black people have the N word. Can't white people have fella? You know, and we can only say <laughs> we can only say feller. <laughs> You know, with a hard R. Hey, feller. <laughs> feller. But I, I, dude, I'm so, I'm serious. I'm going to take to the streets if I ever see a black person say feller with a hard R. That's our word. Only we can say that, you know? That's, I don't think I want to say feller. <laughs> you don't want to hey, say it? Uh, yeah, I don't want to say it. I'm just saying only we can say it, you know? But, um, yeah. Honestly, I would uh, I would be right there in the protest with you, you know? I know I, I came off as uh, accusatory and... Uh, aggressive towards you being in the protest only to get a rise out of you but it didn't work <laughs> you're, so, <laughs> you're so cool at it i would be there if i wasn't such a fucking um homebody <laughs> no <laughs> no i was gonna say uh dude i'm so introverted like i don't fucking hang out with people and i certainly am not gonna go hang out in the middle of a crowd during uh what can loosely be defined as the worst pandemic of the the last hundred Mod- years you know <laughs> yeah. Uh, since the Spanish flu, but uh, did you have your mask on for your your protesting? Yeah, yeah. I kept it on the whole, yeah whole time. They recommend having a mask on uh, for two things: one to keep the you know from getting sick, and the other so that they can uh, identify you when you kill the cops. Mm. How many how many kills did you get? Uh, I mean, like three, three. But yeah. I got I got an assist too, which is like kind of counted. I don't know. I no, kind of counted. We, I did most, we I did count most KDA of the in this household. We do the KDA. I did most of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you do the classic strongman move of banging their heads together? <laughs> the no, coconut I was, kill. 
I went for I went for for like baby mouse and snipes. I pulled out my my Tarkov uh, Obrez. Obrez baby. <laughs> yeah. I was just I was like mid range. I was just cleaning them out. You know, couldn't you argue though that an eye for an eye makes the whole world blind? Hmm. <laughs> Silence. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. He's not even gonna. <laughs> <laughs> just quiet all right <laughs> no no here's the thing that i've been wondering if when you dismantle the police right because mm-hmm. this is um it's one of those things where there's no uh everybody acts like there's like a, a right and wrong answer uh where in reality um the world's a complicated dirty shitty place and uh when you dismantle the police who the fuck are you going to get to replace the police <laughs> well i think when they say dis dismantle the police and also defund the police is they're aiming like for for example i think this is a big issue the pentagon sends police departments a lot of their old like military military stuff yeah and it's like if they have a bunch of military cool military stuff you want to use that because that stuff is cool yeah and i think that's a major issue because then in it's you start to look at everything like a war zone when it's you know it's not it's just like an american city so i think that is a major issue and I don't think they need to be militarized. I think if there's um, military issues, you call on the National Guard, for example. And instead of like regular police departments having like lots of Humvees and real like military stuff, it's partially just visual too. It's like if you see cops with you know extreme military gear on, you're like, who are these guys? Why? Are, yeah, like, they, I feel oppressed. And, That's why. Yeah. I would say. Well, and and the the military is extensively trained. To handle these things, you know, they go there's and there's enormous chains of commands and stuff, and it's like that that just doesn't exist for police departments in the same way or to the same kind of um, extent and training and things. So I'd say that's kind of an issue. And also, I think when they say that, they're like, okay, wh- why don't we move some of the money that was going into funding these uh, major police efforts into you know community outreach and education, et cetera, so you can curb the issues at the at the stem as yeah. opposed to you know then having to deal with the downstream i i i, I don't really know because i know I it's complicated I, know what, I just asked one thing and you went on for 20 minutes see i told you yeah, it's complicated I mean, I, yeah i want to get i want to give a good answer you know i'm I, I wanna... here's here's to add a layer to the complexity all right this shit's going to end up okay. looking like uh that movie inception when you try to figure it out all right so i was Boom. <laughs> I was trying to watch this, uh, not trying to watch, I was watching this thing on, <laughs> I was trying to figure it out, right, wrap my head around it. it. This lady was talking about, I talked about this on a previous, not this podcast, I went on somebody else's podcast, so nobody's fucking seen it. So, <laughs> I, uh, Damn. This, um, this lady was breaking down why, like, rapes were so prevalent in Vietnam, right? And you could take this kid that's like from the middle of America. He's just a good old corn-fed boy that has never done anything wrong, goes to church on Sunday, right? He's just a good guy that would leave a a completely perfect, normal life, law-abiding citizen, pick him up, drop him into a a war zone, and all of a sudden give him a rifle and a bunch of buddies that are like-minded, and he can be be committing war crimes. Yeah. Yeah. Rapes and murders, wiping out villages and shit. And then you pick him back up, bring him back to the U.S., and he resumes his law-abiding life, but he sleeps in the closet every night crying. Um, you know, why can you do that? Why does that happen? And is it really fundamentally an issue with each individual cop, or is it an issue with the culture of policing itself? I mean, I, I mean, you look at something like My Lai, but I mean, someone stopped that, the My Lai massacre in, um, in Vietnam, I think yeah. in like 69 or something. I don't know when. Um, but uh th- there were there were these i think it was like one battalion or something they went into a town and literally like systematically killed everyone because they it's like the the way the the enemy was it was insidious and i think when when you believe that when it's like um dehumanizing like the, your enemy exactly yeah. and and you didn't know in, who was because it was like uh, these people were, you know, they were sneaky and stealthy and you couldn't, you looked into a, a, a crowd and you were like, 
someone's an enemy here, so they're all enemies. And so we I think that's actually an actual war. And since World War, since Korean War, I think everybody's been plain clothes civilian soldier insurgents since then. Yep. You know? Yeah. yeah. So well, and I mean, an actual state war nowadays is just not realistic. Like it's all proxy wars and like insurgent groups that just have yeah. to deal with. And because uh, I mean, like think about like if Germany declared war on the United States, like the it, it's 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 absurd. Like the amount of interlacing and like you think it's um, absurd, but let me tell you something. Economically, they're at a better position now to rule the world than they've ever been. They're bigger now as a force than they've ever been in the past. And here's another thing. I read this, uh, this guy's opinion, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, I, I saw that fucking look you just gave the camera. You know, that- <laughs> yeah, this, they, they sat there and tried to do this like world conquering thing, you know, because they wanted to be big and everything. But uh, haven't they effectively done that by running the UN? Like they're like the biggest power there. They basically own everything. Isn't but they- that in... Isn't that in uh- Oh no! I'm thinking of the EU and Brussels, Belgium. Yeah, but I mean, good talk. Yeah, good talk. <laughs> they've, <laughs> they've effectively done everything that they were trying to do in World War II, but they just did it uh, peacefully and with shaking hands and handing out wiener schnitzels, right? And, but they have much less cool uniforms this go around. Let's be honest. Yikes. Dude, everybody acts like they sit there and try to just demolish everything that they did. You got to admit, Hugo Boss went wacky mode on them outfits. If you take Jesus off that, Christ. if you take off that swastika, them some fucking fierce looking motherfuckers with them trench coats and everything, and those Jesus cool heads. It's fucking they're bad. They look like they were evil, you know. But it was a. They, it was they do a, look like they're evil. It was a bomb ass look. Let's be honest. But uh, uh, totally gross people though. <laughs> <laughs> Every, everything else was not cool at all, but them outfits were fire. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Why? You can't say they had cool outfits? Uh, okay, all right. Okay. <laughs> I mean, is that so bad? Like, people all the time, they'll wear fucking, uh, they'll wear like uh, Che Guevara t shirts and shit. That guy was executing people in Cuba, left, right, front, and center, but they don't have a problem with that, you know? But Che Guevara, that was a handsome guy. You know, you was know, a handsome guy. Yeah, you ever seen Stalin when he was young? Uh, I've se- oh, I've seen that one picture. He wasn't quite as dashing though. Really? Yeah. No, I don't think Stalin so. Stalin when he was like twenty or whatever. God, if I could I'm, go I'm back, <laughs> if I could go back, Stalin, I would, I would young. seduce him and save oh, millions of lives. Oh wait, no, you're right, you're yeah. right. I, I remember this. Yeah, yeah. He was, he was a good looking fellow. Yeah, he was a good looking. I'd, dude. I'd let him. Yeah, I'd let him take over my country. Yeah. I would let them annex me and then create a false famine, you know, for a chance, uh, a chance dinner with him. Someone made fo- photoshopped young Joseph Stalin into a woman. Really? Is it what you would consider a slam piece? Yes. Is that Wellen but- slam piece approved? Because <laughs> I know that's slam- a phrase. I know that's a phrase you use very often in all your videos. <laughs> You can't, Slam piece. you can't keep them from saying it <laughs> in private convo <laughs> mostly, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I guess it's kind of teetered out, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, what is that rule that every conversation eventually uh, mentions the Nazis? Is that a rule? There's a rule like that. There's an internet, internet phenomenon, phenomenon, <laughs> phenomenon. Yikes. Internet phenomenon that the, mentions Nazis. That rule has to be truer now more than ever because if you're anything. Uh, Godwin's law is an internet adage asserting that as an online discussion grows longer, the po- probability of a comparison involving Nazis or Hitler approaches one. Well, duh. Like, <laughs> and I feel like, I feel like you put Sam in the conversation and that's like, it skyrockets. It just, it just accelerates. Yeah. It. But Godwin's law, like that could be applied to anything. Like, let's talk about, uh, uh, like, I don't know, clubbing seals, right? Baby seals. Well, that's the point. That's the point. It's any conversation eventually devolves in, or at least me- I don't even d- devolve is necessarily the right word, but it eventually somehow makes reference to, yeah. uh, Nazis or Hitler. Yeah, but and I, and we proved that today. If you take you got, Godwin's you law and make the point of it 
uh, not Nazism, but like let's say clubbing baby seals. The more you talk about things, oh, we, we that, weren't going to talk about clubbing baby seals. I know, we gonna, I know. Until but, you arbitrarily brought it up. No, but what I'm saying is like the more you don't talk about something, the higher probability there will be of it eventually popping up, right? Because there's only so many but, things to talk about. But there's yeah, but there's uh, th- the point is th- that this that is it is a unique. Uh, concept whereas it's like in like the collective hive mind you so that why? eventually that oh why because of them beautiful outfits made by hugo Jesus. boss okay 